First you have the GI manifestations which are the predominant manifestations that we find. Most of the GI manifestations are the first form of food allergy that we find in infants and young children. Now let us move towards the clinical manifestations of food allergies. First you have the GI manifestations which are the predominant manifestations that we find. Most of the GI manifestations are the first form of food allergy that we find in infants and young children. Cell mediated mechanisms are found to be more common than IgE based mechanisms. So your IgE based tests are often found to be useless in majority of these reactions. Most of the GI early manifestations will be in the form of vomiting, irritability, diarrhea and failure to thrive. Although the older children may have slightly more widespread kind of manifestations which may be related to malabsorption, diarrhea, abdominal pain, etc. So broadly two categories are defined when it comes to GI manifestations of food allergies. So this is the categorization. The first category is food protein induced GIT symptoms in which multiple subtypes have been described as we shall see and most of them are cell mediated. The second category is IgE mediated GI symptoms. They are relatively less common. This includes two entities that is oral allergy syndrome and acute GI allergies. Please remember that among GI manifestations, this is the one which is overall common. This is the one which is relatively rare if you look at the entire spectrum of food allergies. So first is food protein induced GI symptoms. There are four types, four categories, four subtypes of this GI food allergies that we see. The first category is FPIES which stands for food protein induced enterocolitis syndrome. As you can well imagine, it is enterocolitis. So there will be inflammation of the small intestine as well as large intestine. Inflammation of small intestine will lead to features like vomiting, abdominal distension, malabsorption and failure to thrive. And involvement inflammation of colon large intestine will lead to diarrhea in these patients. So FPIES usually manifests in the first few months of life. And these children present with features of vomiting, irritability, diarrhea and abdominal distension. These are the predominant symptoms which are seen. What are the common food allergens against which this enterocolitis syndrome is induced? Many times you are not exactly able to identify. In other patients you are able to find that cow's milk protein or soya based formulas which are being given instead of breast milk they are the ones which are responsible in majority of these patients and Nelson says that about 15% of these children may tend to develop hypotension as well but the interesting thing is that most of these children they have improvement between 3 to 5 years of age so most of them improve by 3 to 5 years of age. So most of them will improve by 3 to 5 years of age. The second category is FPIAP. It stands for food protein induced allergic proctocolitis. As you can well imagine, the symptoms are more restricted towards the large intestine. And so diarrhea is the predominant symptom. Although vomiting can be seen in about 50 to 60 percent of these individuals. So these are the children who will have uh, they, you will find that these children will present will again in the first few months of life with features like diarrhea. It can be protracted uh, diarrhea, it can be prolonged diarrhea or it can be in the form of rarely bloody diarrhea as well. Along with diarrhea, they can also have features like vomiting as well as abdominal distension. In this kind of proctocolitis, it is found that 60% cases, the allergen is breast milk proteins. Breast milk is the allergy. Whereas the remaining 40%, it is either due to cow's milk protein or soya based formulas as we saw in the FPIES category. Third, we have FPE that is food protein induced enteropathy. 
फूड प्रोटीन इंड्यूस्ड एंटेरोपैथी इज ऑफ मल्टीपल सब टाइप्स द मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ फूड प्रोटीन इंड्यूस्ड एंटेरोपैथी इज काउज मिल्क हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज काउज मिल्क प्रोटीन एलर्जी सो इन शॉर्ट इट इज रिटर्न एज सी एम पी ए मोस्ट सिवियर फॉर्म ऑफ फूड प्रोटीन इंड्यूस्ड एंटेरोपैथी इज सीलियक डिजीज both cow's milk protein allergy and celiac disease have been discussed separately in the pediatric gi part so i will not be discussing the details here but they both are included in the category of food protein induced enteropathy and fourth is your eosinophilic gastroenteropathies which again is of two types you have eosinophilic esophagitis these are the children who will have intense eosinophilic infiltrate in the esophageal mucosa they will have gerd that is gastroesophageal reflux disease like symptoms but it will be differentiated from ger by the presence of more than 15 eosinophils per high power field when you do microscopic examination the second form will be eosinophilic gastroenteritis which can have features similar to eosinophilic esophagitis but more prominently of the gi involvement uh, of the lower gi involvement in the form of diarrhea failure to thrive hypoproteinemia anemia malabsorption etc so these are the four types of food protein induced gi symptoms that you need to remember then we have ige mediated gi symptoms the prototype of which is the oral allergy syndrome oral allergy syndrome like manifestations can be seen with animal proteins also but more commonly it vegetable products and fruits are implicated in children as they common cause so oral allergy syndrome many patients are associated with pollen induced allergic rhinitis there whenever these children develop allergy they will have manifestations like oral pruritus tingling and angioedema of the lips tongue palate throat pruritus in the ears and tightness in the throat the symptoms are usually short lived lasting for about 20 minutes to 120 minutes that is about half an hour to 2 hours is the usual duration of symptoms these symptoms are in children are often precipitated by consuming raw fruits and vegetables although adults and older individuals oral allergy like syndrome can be produced by animal proteins also but in vast majority of children it is the raw fruits and vegetables which are more strongly associated this distinct classification this distinct demarcation is something that you and me we as pediatricians we should be always careful about when especially when it comes to entrance exam questions and then we have acute gi allergy also called as acute gastrointestinal allergy acute gi allergy is not a separate syndrome whenever there is a allergic syndrome happening elsewhere in another system suppose skin is having a same syndrome the gi will also develop manifestations like acute abdominal pain vomiting or diarrhea that is called as acute gi allergies both of them are considered to be mediated by IgE mediated forms but are they less common as compared to the usual non IgE based mechanisms of food allergies then we have other clinical manifestations apart from GIT the second common involvement is skin involvement that is cutaneous involvement it is also common in infants and young children and it is often associated with atopic dermatitis according to nelson at least 30% children of moderate to severe atopic dermatitis they will have food allergies so this percentage is important for your exam if you look at the past papers you will find these association based things statement based questions related to percentages are sometimes asked they are directly lifted from nelson most common symptom in these children will be acute urticaria and angioedema although morbiliform rash and various other types of skin lesions have also been described most of them are ige mediated and foods which are commonly implicated in skin manifestations they include eggs milk and peanuts then we have other systemic manifestations which will include respiratory involvement respiratory involvement is usually rare and occurs only when there is concomitant skin or gi manifestation isolated respiratory involvement as food allergies is rare food it, there is a common saying parents will often say and come to you complain that my child is having whenever he consumes milk his nasal congestion develops although parents may give the history both nelson as well as some review articles they are very clear they emphatically say that isolated rhinitis or isolated nasal congestion as a part of food allergy is not common in infants and young children so there will be food induced rhino conjunctivitis that is both uh, rhinorrhea as well as features of conjunctival irritation they will typically accompany the allergic symptoms in other target organs like skin isolated respiratory involvement is very very rare you can put it as a point that isolated respiratory involvement 
in food allergies in children is very rare and if somebody asks you what will be the features of rhino conjunctivitis obviously uh, it will be nasal congestion sneezing ex rhinorrhea etc then wheezing will occur in approximately 25% of ige mediated food allergic reactions although not all, all asthma patients will have food allergies and anaphylaxis can also develop in some of the severe forms anaphylaxis is defined as a serious multi systemic allergic reaction that is rapid in onset and potentially fatal many of these patients will turn up with hypotension and that needs to be managed according to how you manage any patient with anaphylactic shock so these are the important clinical manifestations related to food allergies that you need to remember